Romans chapter number 1, we're going to pick up reading verse 14. Paul says, I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now here the Apostle Paul is talking about his indebtment or his uh, commitment to the gospel and preaching the gospel. And we are committed uh, and we are in debt to preach the gospel Amen. of Christ. And, but he said in them first three words in verse 14, I am a debtor. I am a debtor. Now look that word up, debtor. It just means that which is due one person to another or that which anyone is obligated to do. Right. We know what debts is. If you make a debt uh, with a bank, then you're obligated to pay that debt back. And uh, so uh, we're all, most of us is probably obligated financially somewhere for something, a house, car, or something. So you know what that is. We're obligated not only in our money part, we're all obligated in our words. Right. Amen. We're obligated to tell the truth. We're obligated to keep our words. And so there's a lot about indebtment. We, our promises, our vows uh, that we make, uh, we're obligated a lot of times and in debt. I, think, I thought about this. this evening, we're in debt to our forefathers. Amen. We're in debt to our old-time preachers that preach the truth. And we have what we have today because they preached and stood right and stood firm. And we're indebted a lot to them. And so he talks about indebtment. And so I, I just wrote this thought down. Uh, some things that we're indebted to. And I'm just going to give you, I'm just going to give you the first point, but I'm going to throw the other two out. I got four points. I thought about, first of all, real quick, we're indebted to our families. Amen. We are indebted to our families. As a husband, you're indebted to your wife. As a wife, you're indebted to your husband. As parents, we're indebted to our children, and our children are indebted to us as parents. Amen. I think sometimes I said it this morning, Kids grow up, when they get about 16, 17, they think you owe them everything. Amen? Yeah. You already just thank God they fed you when you couldn't feed yourself. Yeah. And took care of you and raised you where you probably owe them more than they owe you. But we are indebted to our families. A lot of times uh, uh, families are being split up now. Even in churches, you know, used to, we worship together. We came in, and husband, and wi uh, wife, and children sat together. Uh, my dad pastored, and so we sat with my mother. Uh, and we always sat with, with our parents. That was the way it was. They had family worship, and we sat with each other. Now they split them all up, you know. You know, the women's over there, the men's over here, and the kids is over here, and everybody else is over yonder. And, and I still like old-time family worship where you come together, worship God as families. Amen. Then I thought we're indebted to the lost. We are indebted to tell them about Christ. We have an indebtment to us to tell others about Christ. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. And to send, we're indebted to send missionaries out and pray for the lost and pray for the missionaries that, that are witnessing to those that's trying to win them to Christ. So we're indebted to the lost. And I thought about this. We're indebted to God and Christ and the Holy Ghost. We, we owe indebtment to God. Amen. I've said it this morning. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We are indebted to God and Christ for coming paid a debt we couldn't pay. We're indebted to the Holy Ghost that come and convicted us and drawed us to Christ, birthed us into the family of God. So there's a lot of things that we're indebted to. But I, I just want to deal with this one thought tonight, and please write this down if you can. If you can't, that's fine. But I thought about this. We are indebted as a church. We are indebted to each other. Amen? We are indebted to each other. And several times in the Word of God, the word one another is mentioned. Uh, I was amazed as I began to write this down and look at it, how many times the word one another, the two words one another, is mentioned in the Word of God. And when I got to thinking about it and looking at it and writing it down, I got to thinking how much of an indebtment we owe one to another. In fact, we're indebted to each other as a whole church. <laughs> not just our little clique, not just little our beach full, not just our family, amen. 
And uh, don't tell me we ain't got cliques. Well, all churches have got cliques. Amen. You know, if you don't believe it, go out there and eat. When you have a dinner, you always sit with the same bunch. Amen. And we sit, always sit with the same crowd all the time. But you know what? This crowd over here is indebted to this crowd just as much as anybody. We're all indebted one to another. We are a family. Amen. We are a family in Christ. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, and when we come a part of this church, we become a part of the family of Emmanuel Baptist Church. And we are to do a lot of things one for another. Amen. So let me give it to you right quick. I thought about it in 1 John, 1 John chapter number 3, 1 John chapter number 3 and verses number uh, 23, and uh, I'll have to look these verses up, but in 1 John chapter number 3 and verse number uh, 23, he talks about in that verse, and this is the commandment that ye should believe on the name of the Son of Jesus Christ and love one another. Amen. So the first thing we're supposed to do, we're supposed to love one another. Amen. And boy, ain't it a blessing to have people that you can come and believe like you believe and have like faith that you have and uh, love what you love and, and participate and love one another. Amen. Fellowship. That, that's why when you have a church fellowship, that means you go around and you love one another and you shake hands in fellowship yeah. together and hug each other's neck and, and uh, have, and, and you, when one hurts, we all hurt. Amen. Right. And so we are to, com we're commanded to love. You say, well, I don't like them. God said we're commanded to love one another another. Amen. Amen. I tell you what, I don't really find it hard to love people. Amen. Amen. I don't. And you know, the more you get acquainted with people, it seems like the more you love people. Amen. Amen. You find a different side of them or you find things about them. And my friend, the more you think about them and the more you find out about them and find what they went through and what they've gone through, it causes you to have a heart of love one to another. Right. Now, we're, we're huggers at our house. And if you come to our house, We'll hug you when you get there. We'll hug you when you leave. Amen. That's just the way we are. We, we hug the kids and come back the next day. We just hug them all over. Amen. Kevin can come by the morning. We'll hug him and leave him. We'll hug him when he comes by that evening. We'll just hug him again. Amen. And we're just huggers. That's just what we are. And we, When my daughter-in-law got into the family, she's not a hugger. Her family wasn't a hugger. And, and I thought, my son said, and daddy said, Heather's not a hugger. I said, well, we'll change that. And uh, we'll take care of that. And so every time she'd come, we'd hug her. And she'd just do like this, you know, and screech up, you know, and everything. And so every time she'd come, we'd hug them and, and walk them to the door and, and hug them when they leave and hug them when they get tired. And uh, it, it took about two or three months. But uh, they was over at the house one day and they was getting ready to leave. And Kevin was at the door and Heather was standing right beside me. And, and uh, Kevin said, we got to go, Heather. And she said, I know it. And she just kept standing there. And he looked around and said, Heather, you going? She said, I'm waiting on my hug. Amen. And so we gave her a hug. She went out the door. You know, and my friend, it broke a lot of things. We become even better acquainted and fellowship together. And so God said we're to love one another. Amen. And then I'll tell you, look in Romans chapter number 12. Romans chapter number 12. I'm going to give you these uh, uh, quick. And so uh, in the book of Romans chapter 12 and uh, verses number 10, it says in there, Be kindly affection one to another with brother love in honor, preferring one another. We're not only to love one another, we're to honor one another. Amen. Esteem one another better than ourselves. Amen. You know, sometimes we're always trying to promote myself. We're in the day, Sister Janet, we're in the day of selfies. Amen. Selfies. We just, everybody's got to give a selfie. Let everybody, you know, have heard this before. Everybody, you got to tell everybody where you're at. Amen. Everything you do. You got, my, my granddaughter, or my sister's uh, granddaughter is getting married and, and, uh, uh, and she, she, Wanted a big old wedding. Her husband said, let's just go somewhere and let a preacher marry us. You know, she had a big deal, and they done spent probably $25,000 already, and it ain't till December. And, uh, and so anyway, they come to that big wedding and everything. And, and, uh, and, and my sister, I said, why in the world are they spending that much money on a wedding? I said, man, just take, they offer them the money. I thought, I'll just take the money, amen. But, but they had to have a wedding. And then she said, well, they have to put pictures out. You know, they have to do that, and then they have to put pictures on Facebook so everybody can see them, you know. And I told her, I said, I'll tell you what I'd do. I said, I'd go get some preacher to marry me, take that money, and then I'd go up there some Sunday and just stand around and let somebody take my picture and send it on there. Amen. 
Because, you know, but, but we're in a day of selfies. Everybody wants to say, but you know what it says? We're to honor one another. Amen. That means extend one another. I remember when I was raised as a, as a young person, I was always raised when an older person walked in the building and you stood up. Amen. So, Brian, you remember that when I start coming around you anymore, amen? But well, that, that was just something, you know, when an older person came in, you stood up. Uh, and, uh, and if there wasn't no seats, you gave them your seat, amen? Right. And you honored the older person that was in front of you. Uh, we was always, we was raised when the man of God come in. We stood up and shook hands and fellowship to him. And you know what? That was honoring somebody. Give them the honor that they're due. And we ought to honor one another. Amen. Honor them for what they do and honor them for who they are and honor them for the talents that they have. And so we're to love one another we're to honor one another. Then look in Romans chapter number 10 also with verse number uh, uh, chapter 12 verse number 10. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love in honor preferred one another. That, speak to, uh, that really speaks of being devoted one to another. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another. We're to be devoted one to another. You know, some people, they like other people, barely do other people, I guess. I guess that's okay, but they know what? We're to like each other the same. Right. And we're to be devoted to people in like faith. It's just like, our, uh, like a family. When our family has troubles, you know what do we do? We rally around and take uh, my daughter-in-law. We was in Kentucky in a meeting. They called and said, my, brother, my daughter-in-law's lung collapsed. And immediately we just walked out and got in the van and, and, or the truck and left and went, went home. And my friend drove to the house and, and was there to take care of the baby and do what we could. You know why? We were devoted to them. And when they hurt, we hurt. And when they had problems, we wanted to run to them because we, we loved them. And my friend, we, we wanted to. And we was devoted to whatever situation and problem is. You know, sometimes we say, well, they got their self in it. <laughs> Amen. You ever have that attitude? Well, they got their self in it. Let them get their self out. Well, we ought to be devoted to one another and help them and encourage them and strengthen them and be devoted to one to another. So we're to love one another. And he talks about honoring one another, uh, devoted one another. Look at James chapter 5. James chapter 5 and verse number 16. James chapter 5 and verse number 16. He says, Confess your faults one another and pray one for another. So we're not only to be to love one another and honor and be devoted, but we're to pray one for another. Amen? Not just your friends, not just your special crew, but we're to pray for every one of us as a family here at Emmanuel Baptist Church. We're to call, how, can I ask you a question? How long has it, call, how long has it been since you called everybody's name in this church? Amen. Not just your friends, but everybody's. You say, I don't know everybody. Well, listen, uh, I come up here and I know where everybody sits. Amen. Sister Nett always moved down. She moved over here. And I told her, I said, don't be there. You're messing up my mind. Amen. Don't be moving over here somewhere else. I said, I got a picture of everybody. I know where everybody sits. Amen. No slick sits right over there. And he always sits right there. And everybody always kind of sits in the same seats. They sit back there all the time. And in my mind, sometimes I've got a vision of all that. Huh? And when we get new folks like these folks back here, now I've got to put them in my brain. Amen. And don't be moving. I done got you down on the third row right there. And, and you know, but in my mind, I could, when I passed in the church, in my mind, I could focus everybody. I know where everybody's sitting. And I could go pew after pew and call their names in prayer. Amen. I tell you, if you can't do that, just go get you a notepad, like I said, and just start right over here every week and just go around and tell everybody you can put in your prayer list, if you want to put their name on it, and go around and put everybody's name on it, and then when you get ready to pray, just tell it to God, amen, and say, God, this is my church family. This is my brothers and sisters in Christ, and my friend, pray for them, and we are commanded to pray one for another. So when I don't like them, it didn't say pray for them if you like. Uh, don't pray for them if you don't like them. It said pray one for another. Amen. I preached that on this morning. Love your enemies. <laughs> pray for them that spiteful use you. So we are, we are commanded to pray one for another. Amen. And, and then not only that, look in, look in uh, Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter number 15. And uh, you can study these later, but in Romans chapter 15, verses number 7, I believe it is, he said, Wherefore receive you one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. We're to, we are to accept one another. We're to accept one another. You say, well, they don't, they don't fit. <laughs> they didn't say if they fit, except accept one another. You know what? You have to accept people like they are. 
Don't, you, don't it get on your nerves somebody's always trying to change you? Amen. I am what I am. You just see what you get. Amen. And you see me at church, but I tell you, when I get out of church, I have fun. Amen. And, uh, and I like to cut up and have a good time and enjoy living. I, me and Miss Kay enjoy living. You know, and so I told them when we went on vacation, I said, I said, well, you just have to accept us like we are. This is us. Amen. And so, you know, we're to accept some. Some people don't have the abilities that we have. Amen. Some people can't carry a tune like some of you can. <laughs> Come on now, help me out. I don't know why Brother Doug lets them sing. They can't carry two in the bucket. Well, just accept them for what they are. It is scriptural. Break a, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. And you're to accept people, their disabilities or whatever. You're to accept. When, at school, a lot of times, there's people that at schoolhouse, they treat people bad. Amen. And I'm going to tell you what, it hurts when you treat people bad and don't accept them for who they are and what they are. I, I heard an illustration the other day. A guy had two apples. He was teaching young folks, and he had two apples, and nice, shiny apples, and, and he had took it and uh, uh, shot a little, <laughs> took a needle and shot a little black stuff inside of one of them, and he set both of them apples up there, and he was telling them kids to talk about them apples, you know, and, and one, of, one of the kids told this, told this apple here, said, you're not as shiny as that apple. He had a shiny one he had shined up, one he'd not need food with, and he said, this one over here was nice and fat and looked red and pretty, and this one over here, and they got to talking about them and everything and talked about different things, and they, and they said, looked at him and said, look, do y'all think it affected these apples because y'all talked about them? They said, no, it didn't affect them, and he cut that one open and had that black on the inside. He said, it may not have hurt them on the outside, but on the inside, it sure did hurt them. Amen? Good. And you know, sometimes we don't accept people when we have things to say about people. My friend, it hurts people. Amen? But we're to accept people just like they are. Amen? Just like Brother Josh. I mean, you just have to accept him like he is. Amen? You ain't no use changing him. And I don't mean that ugly. Uh, but you know, just like me, why change somebody? They got that personality. That's their personality. That's who they are. Amen? And so we have to accept one another just as we are. Boy, you know why I like the rest of that verse? He said, he said in that verse, Wherefore receive you one another as Christ also received us. Amen. Boy, you glad when we come to God, God didn't say, uh, uh, Brother Brian, you're too mean. You're too wicked. You're ugly. You ain't got no hair or whatever, you know. But you know what? God took us just like we are. Hey, when we was raised in Sunday school all our life, never really done nothing mean, good gungans, you know, morally good, God took us just like we are. But I'll tell you what, the same old kind as drunkards or harlots or in the depths of sin, no penny, what a matter, messed their whole life up, ain't you glad? God takes them just like they are. When that prodigal son come home, he was different. He was different when he come back than when he left. But that prodigal son never said a word. He just kissed him and took him right back in just like he is. And so we are to accept one another. Amen. And then, then look in verse, uh, Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15, I believe it is, and verse, verse 14. It says that I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren. He said that ye also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, being able to admonish one another. Right. We are to admonish one another. I thought, I thought that, Sister Jen, I thought that meant, you know, brag on people and promote them when you admonish them. But that ain't what it says. I looked that word up, admonish, and it kind of, well, Kay did riding down the road. I said, look this up. And she looked it up. And admonish means we're to warn one another. They really realize that. And it says we're to, what's that word, Mama? Rep, reprimand? Reprimand one another. In other words, we're to, you know, our responsibility is to warn people. And warn one another and talk to me other about the dangers of things that's going on. Yeah. Amen. That's why Brother Doug preaches like he preaches. Amen. That's why Sunday schools teach like they teach. And that's why your parents tell you things like that. And when you see somebody in the church that's struggling or getting weak or getting involved, you ought to warn them. I said, that's the wrong route to go. So it's our job to warn one another. Amen. And modest one another and warn one another of the things that's going on. You know, sometimes you've been there before. Don't you hate somebody to talk to you? You say, well, I've been there. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> they know the truth. If you like to really talk to somebody that ain't never been there, then you can have an excuse. But these people, you know, that's been there. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm old enough now, and I'm old enough now that uh, uh, preachers call me, and people call me all the time. I had three calls today, and there's people that just calls you, 
and they'll say, Brother Mike, I had a preacher last week. He called said, Brother Mike, could you meet me so-and-so? And I said, I can. And he come, and he, he said some things. You know, what he's wanting to do, he's wanting to find out the direction he was going. He said, is it okay? Is it right? I said, I don't know everything, but I'll tell you what the Bible's got to say. Or some things passed in the church. You know, I said, I've been there before, and you've got to handle it this way. You need to do it this way, because if you don't, it'll come back on you. And you know what he was saying? Warn me, preacher. Help me. And there's things just facing my life. That's why you ought to warn your children. I remember when my boys were small, uh, I was over in Asheville, North Carolina, went home, got them, came back. They had, a, they had a, one of them uh, places over there where people has, had been on dope, got on dope, was alcoholics, and, and uh, they had a, a place for them, padded sales for them. And the pastor had took me over, so I took my boys over there, and there was kids in there, uh, uh, Brother Brian, standing in them little old cells with the padded cells, beating their heads on the wall so all day long, just standing there and beating their heads on the wall. And I took my boys over, and I said, look at that. That's what sin will do for you. That's what drinking will do for you. That's what dope will do. You say, what you doing? I was awarding them. It's my responsibility to my children to warn them. And you know what? We're to warn one another. We're not just sit back and say, boy, they're going to get in trouble. Sometimes it may be good to warn them and let them know that unless you're headed down the wrong road. Amen? So we're to warn one another. And then look in Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16 and uh, uh, verses, uh, let me find, verse 3 through 6. It says, Greek, Priscilla, and Aquila, my helpers in Christ, who have for my life laid down their necks, uh, to whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Salute well, brothers, uh, who is the first fruits of Achaia in Christ. And it goes on down, uh, and, and greet, uh, uh, greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on uh, each other. You go down to verse number 16, and it says, And that salute one another with the holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. What he's talking about is greet one another. Amen. He said, I salute one another. I greet one another. Paul said, what Paul says is, you know, he's, here's these folks that helped him. Here's these folks that's labored much with him. Here's these, la you know, the Bible said we're co-labors together with God. You know what? Ain't it good? Ain't it good? I don't know if you're not supposed to use that word ain't in here, but don't know what the word right now. But ain't it good when you have somebody comes around, and, you know, some people just come in and sit down. Ain't it good when you have somebody just come in and they come by? Yeah, I, I notice people in churches, they go around and start shaking hands with everybody. They stand back there and shake hands and fellowship one another when they come in. Amen? Well, ain't it good to have people come around and just shake hands and fellowship one another? And my friend greet one another, stand there and, boy, good to see you in the house of God today. Good to see you here. Appreciate you coming. And I say that because we go some places. You ain't going to believe this. Uh, you probably will believe it because I'm preaching. But, but we go some places. Brother, you probably experienced this. We go some places to churches, and we come in and sit down, and up to the time I get ready to preach, nobody says a word. Wow. Nobody even says, hello, glad you're here. They look at you like, who are you? <laughs> what are you doing here? Amen. And they look at you like, you know, uh, are y'all invading us? Are y'all from, from Washington or something coming down here to shut us down? Who are y'all? You know, and they look at you like that. I told you this before, but one Sunday we went to the church and they run three or four hundred people in. And we got there and they had a little thing before Sunday school, you know. And we always go to Sunday school. Somebody said, I was the only van just went to Sunday school anymore. Amen. But I always go to Sunday school. I go to everything. And, and we went to that church with Josh and we sat down back there. And they had the little devotion thing for Sunday school. And, and then they did miss, dismissed for Sunday school. And everybody went to their classes. They didn't have an old, old term class like y'all. And they all started going to their different classes and, and everything. There we sat. Well, it got down to just four or five people. And Kay said, are we going to Sunday school? I said, yeah, just give me a minute. And we're sitting there and got down to about four people. And they're fixing to go out the door. And I jumped up and hollered, hey, we're here. <laughs> you say, you didn't do that. There's Miss Kay, ask her. I said, we'd like to go to Sunday school. We didn't come over here just sitting in the pews. We'd like to go. And they come running back there. Oh, we're sorry. You know, I thought, no, you ain't sorry. You'd have left us sitting out here. Amen. And they got us over to the Sunday school class and everything, you know. And I thought, man, here we are, visitors. Uh, and we come in and don't know nobody. And they all walked off and left us. Amen. Of course, I embarrassed Miss Kay, but I can't help that. Amen. But I, I, I let them know. I said, hey, we're here. You know, you ought to never be like that. Visitors come, you ought to be the first one back there to go back there and greet them and let them know. Thank God, I don't know who you are, but we're glad to have you. Who are you? We had a boy in our church named John. He was the best at that. 
He'd go back there, and somebody new come in, he'd sign her back there, and he'd give him, he could remember stuff, and he'd say, what's y'all's name? You know, he'd say, Brother Josh, and Miss uh, Tana, is that right? And, and, and you know, and, and they, you know what, he'd come up there and tell me, he'd say, Brother, God, uh, Brother Mike, that's, uh, that's Josh and Tina, and they live so-and-so and so-and-so, and, and they got two kids, you know, he'd have all that in his mind, you know, and, and he'd come up there and tell me, you know what, he greeted them people, and he made them feel welcome, he made them feel glad that they came to the house of God in the church, Amen. Come on now, so we're to greet one another. Right. Amen. They said greet one another, kiss. Don't be doing that. Amen. But we're to greet one another uh, with the holy kiss, it said. Amen. Right. But we're to greet one another. Then i, I got to move it. Look in Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter number 5. And you may not be enjoying this, but it'll give you something to do after a while. Uh, but in Galatians chapter number, Galatians chapter, where are we at? Ch chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 13. It says in that verse, For brethren, you have been called to liberty. Only use not the liberty for an occasion to, uh, to the flesh, but love serve. But by love serve one another. Yeah. You know what? We're to serve one another. Right. You go over into 1 John, 1 John chapter number uh, 3 again. 1 John chapter 3, I got this wrote down. 1 John chapter 3 verse number 16 it says hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we are to lay down our lives for the brethren but whosoever hath this world's good seeth his brother hath a need and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him how dwelleth the love of God in him my little children love not in word uh, uh, love not in word neither in tongue but in deed and truth and he talks about how we are to my friends serve one another Serve one another. It talks about it. Talks about in First Peter chapter one, verse number twenty-two. It says, says the same thing. I believe it is. I believe that's the verse I want. Verse twenty-two. He says, "Seeing that you have obeyed your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit of love and unfeigned love the, uh, of the brethren, see that you love one another with a pure heart, fervently." So we're to serve one another. Serve one another. I remember years ago, a fellow made an impression on me. I was in Asheville, North Carolina at uh, a church over there, a big church, and uh, Brother Sexton's church, the senior Sexton. And we was over there, and they had a big meeting, and, and uh, we'd go to, we went to lunch. And uh, they had cooked steaks that day. And, uh, and they had steaks on the plate. You know, when you went through, you got your steak and put it in there and got whatever thing you went and sat down. And I will we'll forget that Brother Sexton come around. Now, he's the pastor of the church. Pastor of the church run a thousand people and he he's the pastor. And they with him come out there and he was looking around like this and a guy had a had a small steak, Brother Brian, and he had a bigger steak, the preacher, and he said, Here, brother, said said, Listen, I don't eat too much and said 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 you just got one of them little old small steaks and he gave his big steak to that preacher and took that little steak. And I thought to myself, you know, I thought you're talking about kindness and you're talking about watching and serving one another. He said, listen, I'm, I don't, I'm not important. And he gave that away. That taught me a lesson. Amen. Sometimes we're to serve one another. I said, I was at a, at a meeting in Kentucky, not far from here. They had a camp meeting and there were some preachers there that I know. We sat around the table and they all would come around and sit, you know, I don't know why everybody wants to sit with me and hear all my tales, but uh, they come around and sat with me and was talking and when we got through Brother Josh was sitting there talking I got up and I got all their plates and everything and got all their, their cups and everything cleaned all the table up and went. one of them preachers said Brother Goodson said I don't know why you're doing that he said we ought to be doing that for you I said no I want to do it for you amen and there's nothing happening there that won't nothing hurt you to help a little bit and serve one another amen you see your brother in need help them amen encourage them and strengthen them we're servants one to another right uh, he said, we're co laborers together with God. We're in this thing together. Amen. No big eyes and little you. We're just all in this thing together. Then he talks about, he talks about in Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6 and verses number, uh, number 2. It says, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. You know what? We're to bear one another's burdens. Help carry the load. Amen. Help them. Just like tonight, just like tonight, I seen it. I seen it in, I seen it in action here tonight. I seen a, a picture of that that we're to bear one another's burdens. You say, what are you talking about, preacher? The sister back here that sang. Uh, uh, I started to say old, oh, but you ain't old, sister. I, I couldn't come up with her. What kind of kind of word up with help? Got physical problems. Can I say it that way? And she came up through here, and immediately I seen Brother Josh standing there and waiting. 
When she started down immediately, I seen him shot over her. You know why? She's got physical problems. She can't call her go down the steps and help. These men came and helped her. You know what that is? That's bearing one another's burdens. That's a burden to her. That's a handicap to her. Amen? And we're to bear one another's burdens and help each other. Be out there. I know one fellow, I go to one church, and he's always out in the front. He's always standing around out in the parking lot. And I, I thought, he's always out here in the parking lot. And I thought the preacher had him out there on guard, you know, guard duty or something at the parking lot. But you know what? I got to watching him one time. I was sitting in the car of the truck, and I got to watching him. And you know what he was doing? He'd see some of the older people come in. He'd be standing out at their car and open the door for them and help them get out. And he'd help them get out and help them get in. Some of them, he'd, carry, he'd help them all the way. He'd carry their stuff, pocketbooks or whatever. He just carried it right in, helped them in the church, and he'd go right back out there. And here comes some other people, you know, and he'd be right there helping them and taking care of them, making them get in. You know what he was doing? He was buried one another's burden. Amen. And sometimes, you know, it's good when you're under load. And care. It's good to have somebody just come by that's under load. Hey, Josh, here's under load. Him and his wife are having problems, not murder problems, just going through something, you know. You know how to bear their burdens? Just go by and say, hey, I just thought I'd want to come by and have a word of prayer with you. Amen. Just thought I'd come by and share a few words of encouragement. We love y'all and we appreciate y'all. We want you to know you're there. That's a sign of bearing one another's burdens. In fact, in fact, uh, in Hebrews chapter 13, it says, Remember them that are in bonds as bound with them, and uh, them which suffer adversity as being yourself also in the body. You know what he says in that? He said, Remember them that are in bonds as if you are bound with them. You ever put yourself in somebody else's place? I remember years ago I preached a meeting over in Chesty, South Carolina, and they had a prophet's room over there. And didn't have no windows in it. And the preacher, first time I went over and preached, that preacher said, I'll pick you up in the morning about 11 o'clock. We'll go eat lunch. I said, okay. I said, I'm an early riser anyway. So went to bed that night, no pill, no windows. I mean, when you took the light off, it's dark. You, you, you'd have, you had, try to see your hands on your face where you, you couldn't even see it. Dark. And, and in fact, the first morning I stayed over, he, he called me about 11. He said, you ready to go? I said, man, I ain't had a bad yet. The sun ain't come up. He said, ain't no winters in there, preacher. <laughs> I'm still in the bed. That's a miracle. But anyway, uh, but, but there was a, a, a blind guy. There was a blind fellow that stayed in that prophet by himself. And when he left, I came in after him. He sung on Sunday and stayed there Sunday night. Then he left, and I would come out of the motel and stayed the rest of the week in there. So I got up one morning, and I thought, well, I'm just going to enter in his cell. I never turned no lights on. You couldn't see nothing. I tried to take a shower. I tried to shave. I tried to get ready in that darkness. And I'm going to tell you what, it wasn't easy. <laughs> Amen? Amen? It wasn't easy. In fact, I turned the light on for left just to make sure everything was okay. My hair was all straight. <laughs> but you know what? I mean, running around in the dark trying to... And you know what it done? It, it made me enter into his place. I put myself in his place. And I had more respect for him later. I loved him more. I prayed for him more. You know why? I entered into his burdens. And in doing so, it helped me share his burden because I was in his place. Amen? So we're to bear one another's burdens. And we're to help one another. And then look in Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. I told you you wouldn't believe how many of them is in here. But in the book of Ephesians chapter number 4 and verses number 2, he said, he said with all long-suffering and meekness, with long-suffering, forbear one another in love. Well, that got me stuck. Forbearing one another in love. So I told Miss Kay, I said, Miss Kay, I said, uh, look that word up forbearing. And we was coming up the road. I said, look that word up, forbearing. What's that mean? You know what it means? It said, forbearing one another. It means it was withhold, abstain, refrain, leave alone. And you know, sometimes you just got to leave some people alone. Amen? Right. That don't mean you don't like them. You know what? But sometimes when they're going through burdens and hardships and trials, sometimes you just got to step back and leave them alone and let God work in their heart and work in their life. Amen? Amen? Sometimes it's better just not say nothing and just leave them alone. I heard a message here a while back. Made, it, it made a, a biggest impression on my life in a long time. It, it, God didn't preach long. He's from Texas. He was in a meeting in Oklahoma. And he didn't preach long, but what he had to say, it tore me out. I mean, it tore me out. 
And here's, here's what he said over in the book of Luke. You don't have to turn there. But over in the book of Luke, when Je you remember when Jesus came in the synagogue and, and he picked up the book? He picked up the book and the Bible said he read it. He said, he, let me read it to you. And he came to Nazareth where he had been in custom. And his custom was he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of God is upon me because he hath anointed uh, me to preach the gospel, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach the deliverance to the captive, recover the sight of the blind, to set a liver them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable years of the Lord. And then he says, and he closed the book. There was a bunch of Pharisees sitting there waiting on him to say something about the resurrection. And they was going to get him. But Jesus come right up to that point and he closed the book. I mean, there's gunning for him. There's waiting on him. And he just closed the book. And the Bible said they said, was not them, and they wondered at his gracious words. And you know what that preacher preached on? Learning when to close the book. And you know, sometimes, you know, you're talking to people, the best thing you can do is just close the book and say no more. Amen? Just leave them alone, let God work it. Sometimes you have to do your kids like that. Sometimes the best thing you can do is just close the book. Amen? Come on now, y'all see what I'm saying? <laughs> sometimes you got to do your wife like that. <laughs> Amen? Sometimes you got to do your husband like that. And you, know, you know, get a little fuss. Sometimes the best thing to do is just close the book and walk off. Amen. Right. Remember one time, this is years ago, back when we first got married, Kay was just a fussing about something, just a fussing, carried on, and I'm standing there listening at her, and she don't even know what she's fussing about now, and it don't matter. We didn't pay no attention to it anyway, and she did fussing, carrying on. And when she got all through, said, what all she got to say? I said, do you feel better? Got all that out of you? Can we go on now and do our day? She got madder and far then, amen. <laughs> she say, well, you know, you're just trying to close the book on that conversation, you know. And sometimes the best thing you can do, I, I've talked to people before, they just pour their heart out, just pour their heart out. And you want to say something. And the whole ghost says, don't say nothing. And when they get through, I just pray for them. I say, all right, let's pray for you. Pray for them, get up and leave, you know. And they'd come back later, said, Brother Goodson, I got so mad at you. I said, why? You didn't say nothing. I said, God told me not to say nothing. I closed the book. You know what? It made them go home and search their heart and get things in the right direction. If I'd have said something, they'd done what I said. Amen? <laughs> and sometimes you just have to let people alone. And I wish preachers could learn this. Sometimes you just got to leave people alone and let the Holy Ghost work in their heart and work in their life. You just, you just keep coming. Encourage them to come. Holy Ghost get them. Sometimes we try to, even people getting saved, we try to pick them green. We've got to have somebody saved this week. Bible school, we've got to have a one marriage. We've got to get somebody saved this week. Hey, you better just close the book and let the Holy Ghost Amen. speak to them and work in their heart. Just go. Sometimes the best thing you do is do what I said a while ago. Just go home and pray for them. Amen. Just encourage them. Go home and pray for them. And sometimes you just have to close the book and leave them alone. Amen. Come on now. Help me out. I hope you understand what I said there. And then uh, i got two more. Look in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And we will get through here in just a second. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verses number 11. Wherefore, comfort you yourself together and edify one another, even as also you do. We're to edify one another, build with one another's up. You know, I, I read a thing one time, a, a medical thing. And, and I'm, a, I'm a reader. I like to read everything. I read more than just the Bible. I like to read stuff and find out about stuff. But, you know, it said a lot of kids is problems. A lot of kids grow up with this kind of problem. They're always being downed. You ain't going to never mount to nothing. Well, you know, if you say that long, you'll convince that kid they ain't going to mount to nothing. You can't do nothing. You can't sing. Amen. You can't do this. You can't play ball. You can't do all that stuff. You know, you ain't going to be worth nothing. You ain't going to mount to nothing. <laughs> and they get to believe in that. You know what they do? They just quit. And most of them, they don't mount to nothing. Because you've convinced them. They said you're edify one another. Amen? Amen. Edify one another. I'll tell you what's wrong with some parents. You know what? <laughs> it's going to go real good. i tell you what's wrong with some parents. They want their kids to be what they want them to be. Right. Oh. Yeah, good. 
They didn't get to play ball, so they want their kids to play ball. They was a cheerleader, so they want their daughter to be a cheerleader. Well, she might not want to be one. Yeah. Amen. She may want to be one of the book readers. She may be one of something else. You need to find out what that kid, their goals is, and what their abilities is, and push them abilities instead of what you want. Right. I know a girl right now, I know a girl right now, pastored her, wanted to Jesus and pastored her. Her mom was a cheerleader, and she was determined that her daughter was going to be a cheerleader, and she pushed her to be a cheerleader, and took her and made her tumble and do flips and everything. A little girl come to my office and cry and say, Preacher, I, Mama wants me to be a cheerleader, and I don't even want to be a cheerleader. She pushed her and pushed her and pushed her until she became a cheerleader. And then she went to college as a cheerleader and everything. And then she got in college as a cheerleader and messed her life up. Got pregnant. Everything else happened. Her mom had pushed her and let her do what she had in her heart to do. Might have been different. Amen. And you know what? We're to edify one another. Amen. Encourage one another. Say amen. It's kind of like some preachers, you know, they want to say, they want you to say amen when they're preaching, but they don't say nothing when you're preaching. Right. Amen. <laughs> some singers, they want to shout when they're singing, but they sit there and look at you like at a cave looking at a new gate when they sing. Right. Amen. You ought to encourage the other singers. You ought to encourage the other preachers. You ought to encourage the other Sunday school teachers. You ought to encourage one another in the Lord and edify, build them up. Amen. And then look at the last one. This is, I saved this and last one for a reason. <laughs> Look in Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 32, I believe it is. Uh, no, it's in Ephesians chapter 4. He said, verse number 30, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed of the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor of evil speaking be put away from you. And be ye kind one to another, tender heart, what? Forgive it. That's Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. You know what we're supposed to do? We're to forgive one another. Right. Amen. <laughs> Ain't it amazing? We do something wrong, we want everybody to forgive us. If somebody do something wrong, we don't want to forgive them. Yeah. We're to forgive one another. Yeah. And you know when you forgive somebody, you really forgive somebody, uh, you forgive them. Amen. You don't bring it up no more. Right. Amen. You ever seen some people, I don't know if you know any people like this, Maybe your wife's like this. Maybe your husband's like this. I don't know. You ever see somebody like this? Preacher, you probably pastor about like people like this. It's, I forgive you. The wife, you know, I forgive you. And then six months later, they're getting the fuss, and she reaches back her. You know, so I'm going to bury the hatchet, and well, she leaves the handle sticking out, you know. And every time you get the fuss, you bring, well, what about that? You know, that's six months. I thought you forgave me. Well, I thought I'd just bring it up. She didn't forgive him to start with. When you forgive somebody, you forget it. You don't never talk about it. You don't never bring it up no more. I mean, if you really forgive somebody, you don't even talk about it. Amen. You never throw it back in their face. You never bring it. That's what he said. Forgive. Hey, listen. Let me let me prove it to you. He said, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake. You ever had God throw things back up in your face? You ever had God look at you and say, well, I remember, you know, you mess up, you know. Yeah, you messed up last time, three months ago. He ain't never done that. He just forgives you every time you come to him. He don't ever throw, he's never thrown nothing back up in my face, never thrown a pass up. It's gone. You ask me why I'm happy, my sins are gone. When he forgives you, he forgives you. And we're to forgive like Christ forgives. You know, we got that old saying, well, I'll forgive you, but I ain't going to forget it. You didn't forgive him. Amen. You always bring it up, throw him back up. He said, we're to forgive one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. So let me give you this. I'm through. He said, we're to love one another, honor one another, devote it. Be devoted to one another, pray one for another, accept one another, admonish one another, greet one another, serve one another, bear one another's burdens, uh, forbear one another, edify one another, forgive one another. You know, what an indebtment we have as Christians one another. And what a different church in reality we'd have if we'd learn these one another's to each other. I wrote this down, Satan. It said, it never does say in this Bible that we're to hate one another. It never does say we're to despise one another, get even with one another, ruin one another, crucify one another. But it does say all these other things that we're supposed to do. In fact, if you read that, none of it's negative. None of these one another's is negative. Every one of them's positive. Amen. I never did like that get even spirit. I'll get even with them. I'll get even with them, you know. 
Come on now. <laughs> it ain't your place to get even with them. It's your place to forgive them. It's your place to love them. The Bible said love covers a multitude of sin. Amen. And I, I'm going to say this right quick. My granddaughter, most of you know about my granddaughter. Got all out and messed up in life and messed up. And I'm going to go into all that. Living in a little 12 by 12 building, no power, no bathroom, no running water, nothing. Living in that little building. Broke our hearts. And uh, I was sharing it with a preacher friend of mine, Brother Brian, and I was wanting him to pray. For, you know, I, I mean, I was scared of load. And I shared it with him. I thought, you know, he'd pray with me and everything. You know what he said? <laughs> he said, I'll tell what I do, preacher. And I said, what would you do? He said, I'd just leave her alone. I'd just mark her off. I just leave her alone, mark her off. I wouldn't have nothing to do with it. And I looked at him and I said, but she ain't your granddaughter. Right. She's my granddaughter. Right. And I'm going to love her back. Right. And me and my wife made a, made a goal to love her back. Yeah. And every time we'd see her, we'd hug her, love her. Right. And though she didn't have water, we'd take water. No, she didn't have nothing to eat, we'd slip down there and set food out. We loved her back. Loved her back. She's doing great. Doing good. You know what? I could have run her off. I could have thrown her out. They know what? It wouldn't help to be it. But sure it's good to see her come back by the house every once in a while. Right. And sit down and talk and laugh and fellowship with us. Boy, sometimes the best thing you can do is just love one another. Yeah. We're all going to mess up. You may mess up. Josh, you may mess up this week. And we all have to love you back. Three months from now, I may mess up. And you may have to love me back. <laughs> but we just love one another. Forgive one another. Well, wouldn't it good? I don't know about you. Isn't it good just to have a church you can come to and have people like faith that loves one another, forgives one another, helps one another, encourages one another? And say, hey, every one of I know, I know for a fact, there's people in this church. It ain't, you know, one thing I like about Brother Doug, he helps a lot of people out yonder. But I'm glad he helps people in here. There's people been hurt and suffering through here, and he helps them. Amen. Sometimes we get so busy, churches get so busy out yonder, they forget about these that's in here that's carrying the load. Amen? Amen. And so this is the lesson I give you tonight, this little thought. Hope you enjoyed it about one another. Look them up in the Bible. Read them again yourself. Brother Josh, I'm through. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.